Hey everyone, Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. To see the first episode of the series, you can click the little box that should be somewhere over here. You know, I should draw with like water somewhere here for the first episode. And to see the uh, Patreon page to support this series, you can click the the dirt box down here. That's how's that for interactive programming? Pretty good, huh? Anyway, last time we uh, started our Wave Manager class, and it doesn't really do much right now. As in, the game doesn't look too different from the episode previous to the last one, uh, in, in a practical sense of our enemies spawning, but that is all going to change this episode, because we're actually going to give our wave manager some actual responsibilities and have it affect the game by implementing some features for it, such as managing waves, which is what it was destined to do. So uh, let's go to our wave manager class, and we need to add a lot of stuff here. First off, hmm. <laughs> First off, we're not actually doing anything with it that we weren't doing just in the wave class. Right now we're just calling update and it's just updating our wave. And we just have one wave right now, one continuous wave still. So let's change that. And the way we're gonna change that is in our new wave method, we're going to increment our wave number variable so wave number plus plus that'll just add one to it uh, as you can see here we start at zero and now every time we start a new wave we want to keep count of what wave we're on and we'll also make a little message here for testing system.out.print or yeah dot print line we'll say beginning wave probably put a space there and then say wave number and so now every time we call new wave, it'll increment that wave number and then it'll print out that we're starting a new wave. So if we start the game now, just say beginning wave one, which is correct. Uh, unfortunately, we only have one wave in the game right now, so let's change that. So current wave equals new wave, hmm. So first off, we want our waves to end. So right now they're just going forever. So in our wave class, we need to implement something to take advantage of our enemies per wave method, or variable here. So the way we're going to do that is, in our current update method for our wave class, what we're doing is we're increasing our time since the last spawn, so we're like keeping track of how much time has spawned, or how much time has passed since now and the last time we spawned an enemy. And if that's greater than the amount of time we want between enemies, we'll spawn an enemy. And then we're setting that time back to zero. Then we're going through all the enemies in our enemy list. So when we we're playing the game, our wave class is what's responsible for drawing this guy and updating this little enemy here, as well as this guy. Every enemy on the screen is updated and drawn. All that's done to the wave class in this right here. So it cycles through all the enemies on the screen and uh, deals with them appropriately. So it's actually a perfect place right here while we're already going through all the enemies on the screen to check if the wave is over, to check if all the enemies are dead because all the enemies will die one way or another. They'll either get killed by a tower, or they'll reach the end of the maze and they'll kill themselves, so to speak. So we're going to create a new boolean here. At the very top, private boolean, and I'm gonna call it wave completed. And then in our constructor, we're gonna say this dot wave completed equals false because to start off it is obviously not completed. And to be good programmers, we should probably add this dot in front of these two other things as well, just to be super specific. So when you're saying this, what you're saying is this class, so the wave class. So for instance, when we say this dot enemy type equals enemy type, you can actually see it's color coded for you in Eclipse, but this dot enemy type is the, the main enemy type of the class. So that's up here in our variables that we declared. And enemy type, is this variable that we just pass in through the constructor. So it's just good practice to say this and be very specific so that you don't accidentally call the wrong uh, method or talk about the wrong variable at the wrong time. So we have this dot wave completed equals false, and we want to check when the wave is completed so we could set that to true. So first let's make a getter so our wave manager can tell if it's true or false. So at the bottom, public boolean is completed 
and we will return wave completed. So now in our wave manager class, we can say if current, I would say if not, so exclamation point means not whatever we're about to ask, if not current wave dot is completed, then current wave dot update. So that's just like a way to say, if the wave is not done, then continue to update it. Otherwise, don't update it. So now we need to trigger that completed status in our wave class. So every time we update, we're gonna make a Boolean called, let's be specific here, all enemies dead. And it will be equal to false. And when we cycle through all of our enemies, we're checking already if they're alive. So, hmm. You know what, we, we should actually set this to true by default, and I'll tell you why. So all enemies dead is set to true by default. We're gonna assume every update that all the enemies are dead. But when we cycle through all the enemies and we check if they're alive, if just one of them is alive, then we know that's enough to say that all enemies dead equals false, because there's at least one alive. So now we're going to, we need to do one more thing here because we still keep spawning enemies forever and ever. So we also want to implement this new enemies per wave variable right here. So in the update method, let's say if enemy list, which you'll, if you'll remember, it's the uh, list that includes all the enemies that we've uh, created so far. So if enemy list dot size is less than enemies per wave, open bracket, and close the bracket down here below that if statement. So I'll tab all this forward. If you highlight all this and then press tab, it'll indent it for you. So make sure you get this exactly like this, all right? So we're saying if, the amount of enemies we've spawned so far, so the size of our list, which increases every time we add an enemy, is less than the total amount of enemies that should be in a wave, then we're gonna keep doing our stuff. We're gonna keep checking how much time has passed and spawning a new enemy when it's appropriate. All right, so now what we're doing is we are making sure that we're not infinitely spawning enemies, right? We're only spawning as many as we're allowed to. And then on top of that, we're checking to see if all the enemies are dead. So if all the enemies that we're supposed to spawn have already run through their life and made it to the end of the maze. Because uh, they're not going to get killed by the tower right now. Our tower is awful at its job. And we have is completed coming here. So let's uh, let's check. Let's try this out then. Um, all enemies. Should this be higher? This is actually isn't going to get called because we're remaking it as true every time we update. And then that's being called down here. Uh, let's see, how should we do this? Well, we spawn down here. Hmm. There's a few different ways to do this, so I'm just trying to think the easiest way. Because right now what we have is we have our update method and every single time it updates, we're making this variable as if it's brand new. We're declaring it, we're saying it's a Boolean, this is its name, and this is its value. So by the time we get down here and set it to false, supposedly, it doesn't matter because the next time we update, it's just gonna start as true again. So we'll never actually get anything for it. So I guess, yeah, I guess we can just make it up here, so. Private Boolean, but that's like wave completed almost. Um, oh, you know what we're gonna do? Okay, this is easy. All right, down here, so inside the update method, right, this bracket right here, but after this for loop, we're going to say, if all enemies dead, then wave completed, equals true. There we go. I feel like that's what I had in mind when I created this and then just lost it for a second. So now what we're doing is we're updating every time the game updates, we're saying we're gonna make a new variable called all enemies are dead and it's set to true by default. So we're setting out to disprove that. 
So when we go through all the enemies, if even one is alive, we'll set it to false. All enemies dead is equal to false. And then once we get through all the enemies, assuming at least one's alive, it'll be false. But if all of them are dead, it'll still be true. So we'll get to the end of the update, we'll say, if all the enemies are dead, then wave completed equals true. So the wave is over. So in our wave manager, let's say if current wave is completed, hmm. Let's test it out here. So it should stop updating that wave when all the enemies are dead, and it will say the wave is over. So let's go to our game class and kind of speed things up here for testing because it's not super exciting to watch right now because our tower is very poorly shooting at them. Uh, we have our time between enemies is four seconds. Enemies per wave is five. Let's just make two enemies per wave and two seconds between. And let's uh, get their speed a little bit higher. It's on 40. Let's set it to 70. And let's try running this. So when we run it, we see beginning wave one down here. We only have two enemies per wave. So you can see that worked. That's the first thing that worked is we're only spawning the maximum amount of enemies per wave. Now they'll both die here when they reach the end. One, two. Wave is over. Hooray. And it's going to keep saying that over and over. So let's go to our wave manager class. So that worked. So we now don't have one infinite wave forever and ever and ever. We now actually have a finite amount of enemies per wave. So that's great. So the next part is actually going from wave to wave and starting a new wave when the first one ends. So instead of just printing, we're just going to call our new wave method. And I think that should actually kind of be set up already. So let's try it. So beginning wave one, those are our two enemies. And when they reach the end, immediately after, the next two enemies should spawn, and we should get a message. Beginning wave two, cool. And here's the next two enemies, so the next wave. So now we actually have waves of enemies coming forward, which is a huge step forward from just our very testy feeling infinite waves of enemies forever. Uh, so you can easily experiment around with in the game class here how many how many enemies are in each wave and uh, the time between each wave and the time between each enemy in the wave and the speed of the enemies and stuff like that so feel free to mess around with that uh, obviously one main thing we're missing is a kind of pause period between one wave ending and the next wave starting so right now as soon as the last enemy dies the next one immediately starts and you might want that you might want that in your game, but we should probably program a way to implement a pause in case you want that as well, and you can just turn it on and off, depending on whether or not you want to include that in your game. Uh, yeah, but that is it for this episode. I think next time we are going to... <sighs> I'm not sure how much we actually need to do in the Wave Manager class anymore. We've got most of it done. It's a pretty basic class when you get down to it compared to like our enemy class and stuff. We might start working on our tower and uh, getting that more functional, that it actually has enemies to fire at. And I guess we'll just have to find out next time. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>